Hi, Paul Stacy here. I'm at UNESCO headquarters in Paris, uh, where I've been meeting for the last couple of days as part of a intergovernmental meeting of experts uh, looking to finalize the UNESCO Open Education Resources draft recommendation. The whole idea is to bring forward to its General Assembly in November an OER draft recommendation for, for adoption by all countries around the world. And there's a, a meeting of this group here over these last two days. It's May 27th and 28th here in Paris to, to basically look at how to uh, define an OER recommendation that could be adopted by, adopted by countries all around the world. Um, there's, there's really four main sections to the draft OER recommendation. I feel privileged, of course, to, to have some input into what it says. Um, the four main sections are first uh, a section dealing with uh, what the definition and scope of what we mean by open education resources and, and the scope of the draft, draft recommendation itself. Uh, there's a second section that deals with uh, the aims and, and objectives of the draft recommendation. And then a third section that looks at the action plan associated with what the recommendation says. And then a final section that deals with monitoring. Um, it may be worth highlighting just some of what the action plan items are, because I think that's really where the heart of the draft OER recommendation is. And so there's a, a number of actual areas of action. Let me just read them out to you. Uh, building capacity of stakeholders to create, access, use, adapt, and redistribute open education resources. Uh, the, the development of supportive policy for open education resources. Encouraging inclusive and equitable quality open education resources. And then uh, nurturing the creation of sustainable models for uh, for open education resource development and use, which is something I've been able to actively contribute to. And, and then uh, finally, uh, facilitating uh, international cooperation around open education resources. So uh, those are the main areas of action. The process is quite a rigorous one in terms of defining the draft OER recommendation. There's uh, lots of representative countries here, and each section of the draft recommendation is put forward for uh, discussion and for suggestions for changes, if there are any, and then, uh, and then everyone is uh, asked whether they accept the changes and there's a kind of process of consensus that's used to, to build out the final version of this draft recommendation. And then those of us who are observers can also, of course, uh, contribute suggestions and changes and improvements to what the, the draft recommendation should say. Um, it's quite, a, quite an awesome experience, of course, to be involved in a process like this, and, uh, and I'm really hopeful that the draft recommendation, um, I'm sure it will be finalized today, and when it goes forward for adoption at the General Assembly in November, that it's adopted by all countries around the world. Check it out, the UNESCO draft OER recommendation.